of education, of civilization, of traditional religion, whatever, by himself, he couldn't make it. Even with human support, he cannot make it. And you, as you come today, you have come to the right place because what religion cannot do, what education cannot do, what psychology cannot do, what civilization cannot do, Christ will do for you today. Are you there? I said tonight, it's your night. This man number three, he was unable to walk like others. He just saw them walking, but like others, he had the desire, he wanted to be, he could not be. You know, he bought us, we have learned about Enoch, we have learned about Noah, we have learned about Abraham, and they walked, and they walked, and they walked with God, and we say, like them, I'm going to walk. And then we try, turn over a new leaf, make resolution, and tell ourselves, I'm going to be good, I'll be better, I'll walk in the way of the Lord, in the way of righteousness like others. The man could not walk like others were walking, and you cannot make it yourself to you. You cannot walk like others, like Daniel, like Samuel, and you cannot walk like all those uh, great men and women of old. They did it by grace, and if you are going to walk like others, those have introduced to you now, it's going to take the grace of God. But praise the Lord, that grace is here tonight. For you, it's here tonight. For me, it's here tonight. And I pray that that grace that helped Enoch, helped Noah, helped Abraham, helped Samuel, helped Paul, and all the others, that same grace and that same power will come upon your life tonight. It will help you. I said it will help you. The man, number one, could not walk by himself. Number two, he could not walk even with support, human support. Number three, he was unable to walk even like others. Now, as he was born, he must have seen his father get up and go and come and then walk. And as he saw his father, like father, like son, I want to be like my father. I'll walk like my father. Number four, the man had never walked. He wanted to. He desired to. He felt, if my father is walking, I'm going to walk. He could not walk like his father. We have a father in heaven, and he wants us to walk with him and walk like him. It's a father. It's a maker. It's a creator. And it's the God of heaven. And how we just think, if I can just do what the Father is doing. But you know, we cannot. Because we were born impotent. Heavenly power is not in anyone. It's not in any creature to walk like God. By the way, walking like God is what we call godliness. God godliness, living like God, talking like God, strong like God, moving anywhere like God, overcoming any challenge like God. No, we cannot in our strength. And the man had never walked. He couldn't walk like God. Number five, he couldn't walk right. You know, the Bible says that the legs of the lame unequal. If he tries to walk, he'll be wobbling. And that's what has happened to us. We sometimes will think, I'm doing right, and I'm walking like this, I'm walking like this. And when you see your picture taken from heaven, you say, I didn't know it was that bad. You see, all lives, no matter how beautiful, no matter how good, and no matter how appreciated here on earth, when heaven, when the picture is taken from the sky, when your picture is taken from heaven, you are wobbling, you cannot walk right. That's why we came here tonight, that what we couldn't find solution to, in our own human strength, solution has now come. By faith, you will walk right. 
in his power, you will walk right. As you connect with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will walk right in Jesus' name. What the Lord is telling us is that as you look at the man, he was born that way. He was impotent in his feet. And he was a cripple from his mother's womb. And then it says, who never had watch. And have you ever walked sometimes, you know, as you see somebody and you say, are you a Christian? He says, yes, I am a Christian. What do you say? You are a Christian. I was born in a Christian home. I hear you. You are born in the garage that does not make you a car. You are born where the sheep and the animals are being raised. That does not necessarily make you a sheep. But if you are going to have this power and this ability to walk righteously, you'll be born the second time. Born from above. And born by the power and the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God. It's yours today. I said it's yours today because that power of heaven as you connect with Jesus and you say, I accept, I believe Jesus is my Savior. You'll be born afresh, born again, born anew, and then you'll be able to walk righteously. Number seven, he was unable to walk in the way. Yes, he knew the way. He could see the way. He said, that's the way. If I'm going to succeed, that's the way to success. If I'm going to be happy, that's the way to happiness. If I'm going to be upright, that's the way to uprightness. And if I'm going to have prosperity, that is the way. And then in his heart, in his mind, he wanted to get up and walk in the way. No, he could not, who never had walked. How many of us know the right way? We know the Ten Commandments. I want to walk in that way. We know the sermon on the mount. What a message Jesus preached. And he said, this is how to live. And this is how to live. And I want to get up and do that. But, you know, we were born with this powerlessness in our moral life, in our spiritual life, in our inner life, who never had walked. We cannot walk in the way, in the way that leads to heaven, in the way that leads to glory, except the divine solution and the divine savior and the divine power will come upon our lives. And then by the grace of God from today, you will walk straight. You will walk right. You will walk righteously and you will walk in that narrow path that leads to heaven in Jesus' name. If I'm talking about you, where are you? Can you say amen? amen. Uh, look at Romans, Romans chapter uh, 7, and I'm reading here from verse 15. All these things I've been describing, everything collected together here in Romans chapter 7, verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. Even myself, my knowledge condemns me. And even myself, all that I know, the things I ought to do, I cannot do them who never at work. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. That describes the man. That describes every man. That describes you. But tonight, that story will change. Your story will change tonight. Say, my story will change tonight. Christ will come into your life and Christ will change your story. Number one, the impotence of the man, our situation. Number two now, point number two, the importance of the message, our solution. The importance of the message, our solution. The message is the word. The word is the gospel. Understand? Every good thing you see on earth came by the word. In the beginning, God said, 
Let there be, and there was, there will be light tonight in your life, light tonight in your family, light tonight on your way, and it comes by hearing the message, let there be, there will be in your life tonight in Jesus' name. The importance of the message, our solution. If we're going to have solution, and you are going to have solution, I said you are going to have solution. It comes by the message. Look at Acts chapter 14, verse 7. And there they preached the gospel. And there they preached the gospel. Paul, Silas, what do you have to preach the gospel? What should you just go there and say, lame man, rise up. Why don't we have to preach the gospel? Why don't we just say, here is divine solution. And then, without any worship, and without the word, and without the message, we just say, blind eyes open, and we say, lame man, rise up and walk. Some people say, I don't have time to hear anything. All I came here for is divine solution. Just pronounce it, I will get it. You have to count one before you count two. And you have to count two before you count three. The word first. The message first. And then the miracle will follow. Can I tell you something? As you are there, paying attention to the word, the wonders will follow after you. As you are there, paying attention to the message, Miracle will come in your life in Jesus' name. It's the message that tells us about Christ, about God, about what he will do. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. How do you know that without the word? How do you know that without the message? It's the word that makes us to know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. How do you know that without the message? He says, I am God, I change not. Therefore, the children, the sons and daughters of Jacob are not consumed. How do you know that? Is the message the importance of the message that is our solution? Look at Romans chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You know, it caused the gospel, the gospel we're talking about, and they preach the gospel. It's the gospel of Christ. That is, it tells us about his virgin birth. It tells us about his spotless life. It tells us about his substitutionary death for you. It tells us about his burial. And it tells us about the glorious resurrection. The gospel we're hearing is the gospel of Christ. And then it says, for it is the power of God. The gospel that we're hearing is the power of God. And that power tonight will change your life. What are you? It will change your situation in Jesus' name. It is the power that breaks heaven open. It is the power, the power of Christ that removes every obstacle and every demarcation between you and the solution. And now as the message is coming from heaven and the miracle is following and the salvation is following every obstruction between you and your salvation, Every obstruction between you and your handicap, everything is cleared away. The message comes straight to you, and then the miracle comes straight to you, and the salvation will come straight to you in Jesus' name. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You see, there are people, they are ashamed of their solution. They are ashamed of the power of God. And when Paul or Silas or Timothy or when the evangelist here tonight, when he says, if you want Christ as your personal Savior, 
so that solution will come to your life. Impossibility is to become possible in your life. They look here, they look there, they see somebody there, they say, I don't want that person to know I'm giving my life to the Lord. It's ashamed of the gospel. It's ashamed of the miracle. It's ashamed of the solution. It's ashamed of the provision of heaven for his life. You will not be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. Paul was not ashamed because of the Sanhedrin, religious leaders of the land, and because of his past history, what they knew he had been, and what they knew he had done when he heard the message, when he heard the gospel, when Christ himself spoke to him, he surrendered like you surrender tonight. I say like you surrender tonight, and your life will never be the same again in Jesus' name. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is, look at that, it is, look at that, it is, not that it was. You know, some people will say, I wish I lived at the time of Paul when the gospel was mighty and powerful. I wish I lived at that time when solution will always come, for it is in the present tonight, it is the power of God in your life. I said it is the power of God in your life. It said, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Unto salvation. The message the Lord is giving you and giving us, that message will take us away from the path of destruction and from the path of perdition. And it will take you away from the road that leads to hell and now salvation will come to you. Congratulations, salvation will come to you. I rejoice with you tonight. Salvation. I said salvation, redemption, justification, the power of God that turns life around is coming to you tonight in Jesus' name. It is the power of God unto salvation. Look at this, look at this to everyone, to everyone. What does everyone, what does that mean? I said, what does everyone mean? Are you there? Are you part of the everyone? No matter who you are, I'm ignorant, it's for you. I'm educated, it's for you. I'm high, it's for you. I am low, it's for you. I've never been to church before, it's for you. I don't know why, how this can happen, it's for you. It is for you tonight, in Jesus' name. To everyone that believes, I believe. I believe. Whatever others say, I believe. Whatever others do, I believe. Whatever others do not do, I believe uh, that gospel message is coming to you. And as we believe tonight, your divine solution has come. And then it says to the Jew first, to the religious, and then also to the Greek. You know, there are some people to the Jew first, and they say, well, I'm a Jew in a spiritual sense. I go to church, I go to Sunday school, I've been baptized as an infant, and then I've been taking Holy Communion, I am confirmed. I've even traveled to the Holy City, to the Jew first. Good you are religious, good you have been reading the Bible, and good you have been observing you know, all those religious festivals, to the Jew first is coming to you. And then to the Greek, to the barbarian, to the one that knows next to nothing about religion. I've never been there, whatever you are, and whichever side of the world you are coming from, this message of solution, divine solution, and divine power is for everyone. Is it for me? I said, is it for me? Say it for yourself. 
it is for me. And as you believe that gospel, that message that comes from heaven, and it says it's for everyone, in the gospel of Christ, in the gospel of power, in the gospel of salvation, it is just tonight in Jesus' name. Let's look at point number three now. Number three is uh, the impartation. Once again, somebody say impartation. That's how you can say impartation. It's coming. I said it's coming. You know, as you come today and you say, yes, Lord, I know this is for me. The impartation of the miracle, our salvation. My salvation. Say that, my salvation. No matter where you are. And no matter your predicament, no matter the impossibilities in your life, that salvation has now come and it is yours tonight in Jesus' name. The impartation of the miracle, our salvation. I want you to come back to Acts chapter uh, Acts of the Apostles, we're reading from uh, chapter 14, verse 9. The same had Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him. That's attention. That's total attention. That's undivided attention. He was hearing the word. He didn't allow anything to sidetrack him because he knew my moment has come. Your moment has come. And it says, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly, beholding him, Paul looked at him steadfastly. And he looked at Paul steadfastly. And perceiving, Paul perceived that he had faith to be healed. Look at verse 10. Said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. Before I go on, look at that command. Stand upright on thy feet. Here the Lord comes to us today. We have been impotent. We have been powerless. We have been helpless. And the Lord is saying to us, stand upright. He tells us, number one, physically stand up. I have not been able to do that before. But power is going to be injected into your life. And physically stand up. You will stand up. Amen. Limb legs will stand up. Amen. Broken bones will be mended. You will stand up. Physically, stand up. Morally. Morally, stand upright. You have been wobbling and wallowing in sin. You couldn't get up. Your life was dirty. Your life was defiled. And here, now the gospel that will transform your life. The gospel that will turn your life around and physically stand up, morally stand upright. Your life will be upright from tonight. The things you couldn't do by yourself, the power of Christ will come to you tonight. It will be done in Jesus' name. Physically stand up. Morally, stand upright. Spiritually, stand fast. You see, the word of God tells us as we come to the Lord. And before, we couldn't do that. If people were doing evil, we didn't have the moral strength or spiritual strength to resist whatever temptation that came. But now, as the power comes in your life, spiritually stand fast. Everyone that has given himself, herself to the Lord, or will still give himself to the Lord, during this crusade of divine solution, the power to stand up, the power to stand upright, and the power to stand fast will come to everyone in Jesus' name. I didn't hear a good divine solution. Amen. Amen. Physically, stand up. Morally, stand upright. Spiritually, stand fast. Doctrinally, stand firm. You know, there are people you cannot tell what they believe. 
and they hold the Bible, they carry the Bible, but they cannot stand firm. They, they say, I'm a Christian, I'm born again, I'm a child of God. This week, look at what they believe. And the following week, they believe another thing. The Lord is coming to you today. And he says, I want to help you. He will help you. I said, he will help you. And he says, doctrinally, stand firm. You will stand firm. Unshakable. Are you hear your Amen immovable you will stand firm in jesus name now courageously you know people who don't have courage they are afraid they cannot stand for anything and they cannot stand for uprightness but now the lord is coming to you and is saying that courageously you stand alone that's like daniel and daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's meat of the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the eunuch that he will not take that wine and shadrach meshach abednego when nebuchadnezzar said if i decide to cast you into the furnace of fire where is the god that will that will deliver you some people cannot stand alone they do not have the courage but when the gospel comes to you with power you will stand i will stand you are able to stand courageously standing alone and so nebuchadnezzar was angry the anger of nebuchadnezzar means nothing somebody help me shout nothing Whatever they say, how furious they are. When you make up your mind and you say, today I'm going to have this command that says, stand, I will stand courageously, I will stand alone. Number one, physically, stand up. Number two, morally, stand upright. Number three, spiritually, stand fast. Number four, doctrinally, stand firm. Number five, courageously, stand alone. Number six, supportively, stand with. You see, as Christians, as we come to Christ, we have the nature of Christ, we have the life of Christ, and we want to help other people. And when other people suffer, now we can sympathize with them. Other people have a load to carry. We can carry that with them. Our life has now totally turned around. And supportively, we stand with, we stand with other people. Number seven is distinctly. Courageously, supportively, distinctly. Now we stand out. We stand out. We stand out of the crowd. As other people might be corrupt, and we talk about corruption in our country, in the office, in the market, in the educational system, everywhere, even in politics. And then Christ comes to you. As Christ comes to you, you go back to that same office and the power of the Lord will hold you up and you will stand out distinctly in Jesus' name. I will stand out. I said I will stand out in your behavior, in your character, in your lifestyle, and the grace of God, and the power of God, and the salvation of God comes to you today, you will stand out in Jesus' name. Now, purposefully, purposefully. You know, if you're going to stand in life, and you're going to stand as you go through life, there must be a determination. There must be a desire and there must be something you know, that you want to single out yourself and anybody that knows you will know that the wind cannot blow you here and there because you stand for, you stand for something. We have been told if you cannot stand for something, you know, you will fall for everything. Every day can hurry that, uh, that cars will impose upon you because you are not made of the person that has backbone, a person that has diligence, a person that says, I stand for this, and that's what I stand for. Any other thing that comes, any error, any falsehood that comes, I am not for that. 
I stand for something. You will stand for Christ. Are you there? I said you'll stand for Christ. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. You soldiers of the cross, be valiant in your life. You go to the office, anywhere you go to, you understand? Others are going to bench, others are going to cheat, others are going to cut corners, others are going to lie, others are going to do evil things, but you are going there understanding that the grace to stand has come in your life and purposefully you will stand for something good. The amen is too weak. That's not like an Abuja. Amen. Number one, socially, you are standing the right side of. Socially. As you move around, in society, all the other people, they put their heads on the ground and they put their feet dangling in the air. And that's what we've been doing before too. They say everything wrong. They do everything wrong. They act everything wrong. They do everything every day. They are upside down. But now you say, I have the command and the command is given to me and it says stand upright. And socially, in the society, you stand the right side up. Number 10, filially. That is in the family, husband and wife. That is filially, husband and wife, parents and children, you stand by each other. Stand by each other. It is not that when the wife is having a little challenge, then pack your load and then you go where we cannot see you. You are running away from problems. You are not going to run away from problems anymore because solution has come in your life. Solution has come in my life. The husband will stand by the wife. The wife will stand by the husband. The parents will stand by the children. And the children, as the parents are getting older, uh, they will stand by their parents. Filially, in the family, we have the command of the Lord, and the grace is coming to us, and the power is coming to us, and you stand by each other in Jesus' name. Now, tonight, tonight, what will bring that solution? What will bring uh, that strength? What will bring the supernatural in your life. I'm reading again. I'm reading. It says, it said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he lived and walked. And he lived and walked. And impotence vanished away. Power came in. Tonight, helplessness will vanish away. Tonight, all your weakness will vanish away. And as you hear the word, stand all of a sudden, as we say, yes, Lord, I believe that word is coming to me. The strength, the salvation to make you stand, you will have in Jesus' name. Physically tonight, your weak bones will receive strength. And your big uh, tummy, that something is packed there, as the command comes tonight, all that thing that is packed there will vanish away in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, when you hear the word tonight being opened, your blind eyes are open. And that steep hand, I cannot strike the hand, you will tonight. All cannot, cannot, cannot will vanish away from your life. I cannot stand, that will pass away. I cannot see, that will pass away. I cannot hear, that will pass away. I cannot bench, that will pass away. I cannot walk, I cannot run, that will pass away. It is coming to you tonight in Jesus' name. Now, look at this, look at this. Paul the Apostle looking at him, stage with a loud voice. He didn't touch him. He didn't shake him. He didn't put oil on him. He didn't do anything. It's the word. Why? Because Paul the Apostle had been filled with Christ and the Spirit of Christ. Let me explain it to you this way, that 
when you become a Christian, you stretch out your hand like this. Are you seeing me there? You stretch out your hand like this, and then you see Jesus coming in, and then he gets into you. His hand gets into your hand. His head gets into your head. And his trunk, his body gets into your body. And his leg gets into your legs. And now you are indwelt by Christ when you are saved. And then anything you say now will be the word of power will be the word of authority, will be the word of solution. Because it's not you that speaks, it's Christ that speaks in you. And also as I'm standing here, it's not me talking to you, it's the Spirit of God within me that is telling you, stand upright on your feet and power will come, you'll stand upright in Jesus' name. Christ will speak to you the same power he had in creation. That power of creation will speak tonight and say, stand upright on your feet. And then all your weaknesses, infirmities, and sicknesses, and diseases, and impotence, everything will vanish away. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Salvation is coming. Forgiveness is coming. Redemption is coming. It will come to you. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. It's coming now. It's coming now. It's coming now. Salvation, forgiveness. The gospel has told us that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you want that salvation now, if you want that forgiveness now, if you want that freedom now, and you say, I don't want to be powerless anymore. I want to have the salvation of the Lord that will give me spiritual strength anywhere you are. Raise up your hand. God bless you. This one will not pass you by. I said this will not pass you by. Anywhere you are, to the left, to the right, in front of me, far back, anywhere you are, you want that forgiveness now, and you want all the impossibilities and all the weaknesses and all the infirmity, everything to vanish away, and for the strength of salvation, the power of the gospel is salvation to come to you now. Rise up now as you are raising up your hand. Rise up wherever you are. God bless you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Rise up. Salvation has come. Forgiveness has come. Rise up now. Redemption has come. Rise up now. All your sins of the past, the Lord will forgive and then will give you a new life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. That newness is coming right now. Anyway, you are just raised up that time. You are a boy. Salvation is for you. You are a girl. Salvation is for you. And this is the time to look steadfastly. Not to allow anything to distract your attention. Salvation. Salvation. Talk to the Lord while you are raising up your hand and while you are standing up. Make sure that you respond to this call of the Lord right now. Jesus is saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice in all this message you have been hearing, that's his voice. If anyone hears my voice and he opens the door, I will come into him. I will sup with him, fellowship with him. I will strengthen him. Raise up your hand and stand up anywhere you are online. This is your time for your salvation to come at home there where you are watching in a local church there where you are watching on the fields there where you are watching in your hotel room there where you are watching. Anywhere you are now you are watching. Raise up that hand. Concentrate. Pay attention. Don't look here and there. Understand that now salvation has come. And then open your mouth and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I thank you. Salvation is mine. And what was impossible for me before to walk straight and to walk upright and to walk in the narrow path that leads to heaven, all that is going to be possible now. I surrender. 
I surrender my life unto Christ completely. Give yourself to him and then with faith you believe by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourself it is the gift of God. Don't wait for feeling. Don't wait for you know sweating or whatever. Understand the moment you hold on to the Lord he is my savior that salvation will come. Tell the Lord and tell him, thank you. I know you've done it. It's done. I said it's done. Keep up that hand while you're standing up and praying for you now, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you because of the call you've given to everyone. And this salvation, this forgiveness, this redemption is for everyone that calls upon the Lord. And I pray, Lord, according to your promise, which cannot fail, forgive everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray that the strength and the power and the backbone and the stamina that comes with salvation will come to everyone now in Jesus' name. And I pray that as salvation comes in now, and then they go back home, they go anywhere, the power to stand upright and the power to stand righteously and the power to stand out and the power to stand as a real distinct child of God grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have done it. In Jesus' name I pray. It is done. I said it is done. Say, I am saved. The Lord confirmed that in your experience in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our counselors, please attend to those who have indicated that they are deciding for Jesus. If you have decided for Christ tonight, please. Collect a slip from our counselors around you there. Fill in the details and thereafter hand the slip back to them. Counselors, let's quickly give them slips. And please call the attention of the counselor. Please remain standing if you have given your life to Christ. Remain standing until you have collected a slip, filled and returned same to the counselors. All counselors, let's uh, get out the needed details. Please, as you collect the form, you fill in the details, your name, your contact, phone, WhatsApp number, email, whatsoever will help us to be, of, to be able to contact you and be of more help to you. And all the brethren online, all the listeners, all the audience online, please click on the link that is being shown online and fill in the form and submit. Fill in the form online and submit. We want to be of more spiritual help to you. And the Lord will make it a blessed fellowship and relationship in Jesus' name. So let's have all the details so you can receive more from the Lord as we get in touch with you. Praise the Lord. Uh -uh. Are you there? I said, praise the Lord. Your time has come. My time has come. That solution is coming to you now. Power. Healing. Deliverance. Miracle. Signs and wonders. Coming upon your life right now. Remember, remember. The apostles said with a loud voice. Stand upright on thy feet. No touch. No physical contact. He sent the word and it happened. And it's going to be your turn right now. 
blind eyes will open. Incurable diseases will go. The power of God will come upon your life now. Raise up one hand and lay your hand in the place where you have any challenge. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you tonight. We know that you have not changed. Your power has not changed. Your promises have not changed. And we know that whatever we ask in the name of Jesus will be granted at this time. For everyone here, for everyone over there, and for everyone listening connected, your power is connected with them right now. And therefore, Lord, I pray that divine solution will come to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. Amen. All the swellings in your body come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Deafness, dumbness come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Swelling hunchback and swelling elephantiasis, swelling goiter, Come out in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray, Lord, any incurable disease like cancer, like ulcer, like tuberculosis, whatever, internal problem, I command, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who have stroke or polio or paralysis, lameness, I command, stand upright in Jesus' name. Amen. Skin disease, vanish away. Leprosy vanish away. COVID-19 vanish away in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS be healed in Jesus' name. Every request of your people answer them right now. Everywhere left, center, right, anywhere, all countries, nations, continents, I pray signs and wonders Every now in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray miracles everywhere. Amen. The supernatural manifested everywhere. Amen. And Lord, testimonies in every mouth. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Divine solution is there already. Amen. Deliverance is there already. Supernatural healing there already. Amen. There's nothing else you are waiting for. Do whatever you couldn't do before. Your miracle is ready with you there. Amen. 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 You believe it, shout amen. amen. It is done. Amen. It's, the man of God says the miracle is already where? With you there. So check it out. Give glory to God for what he has done. You come out and testify to the glory of God. As you see the miracle, I can see crutches up there. Please bring them out. We are waiting, we are waiting. Bring them out and let's have the testifier. The testifiers should line up closer by here, one after the other, quickly.
We are waiting, we are waiting. And the media crew, please get ready. Get ready, we want to come to you also. Let's have the first testifier. The miracle power of God is working. As you see the miracle, come out, come out. We are waiting, waiting. Let's have the first testifier, the first testifier. Amen! Amen! Well, as we are listening to the testimony, see, keep on checking. As you see, the demonstration of the power of God, the miracle is there. You come out, we want to hear your testimony. Let's have the first testifier. Testimony time is miracle time. You will receive yours in Jesus' name. Please tell us your name, where you come from, what the challenge was, and what God has done for you. I'm from Nasrawa State, Karo region. It was the uh, last April uh, crusade, so high, that uh, I, before then, I got accidents in, 19, in 2012. Since then, I have a broken leg. And uh, I've been suffering for it. So, but during the, during the, uh, at the March, when the thing was so severe for me that I cannot be able to walk. So, I don't have money to go to hospital. So, they, 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 they have tried before, but the thing could not work. I went to hospital, but it couldn't work. So, but then, when it was so hard, so severe, for me, on that match, I don't have money to go to hospital. Now, during the time of Suaha in April Crusade, so after the GS pro, a prayer, I was healed. Since then, till today, I never have problem on that leg again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The healing is permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Go enjoy your blessing. Amen. Number two. Let's have the next testifier. The next testifier. The God of miracles is working miracles. The mighty God of heaven is working miracles. You will testify tonight. You have received yours. You need to come and glorify the name of the Lord. You need to give God the glory for what he has done for you. The Lord is working wonders. Great, great miracles on this grant. This is miracle grant. Please tell us your name what the challenge was, and what God has done for you. Praise the Lord. I glorify the name of God Almighty for setting me free tonight. 
Sometimes in, in May, I had an accident. And this, I had a fractured uh, leg. And it was operated upon. And since then, we have been watching it. I have done a series of x-ray. And in that x-ray, all we have seen is that it's not joining. But I believe in the Lord that brought life to the dry bone in the uh, dry, uh, in the uh, in the valley of the dry bone, and when I came here tonight, I told God I would not go back home the same. So when the man of God said that we should stand upright, I exercised my faith and I stood on my leg. Without the crutches, I stood and I walked. This, since May, I have not walked. Without crutches, I have not walked. I have been on wheelchair, but tonight. From where I sat down there to this point, I walk to the glory of God. And keep on and walking to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. The Lord has done it for him since May. He had no walk because of the accident. And now he stood up in faith and started walking. And you will also receive your own miracle. And you will testify and the Lord will be glorified. Next, the next testifier, please. Praise the Lord. I'm going to say thank you and thank you and thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful and blessed day. My name is Elizabeth Benedicta Soluka, and this is my daughter, Nicolette Neka Soluka. My daughter has been ill since April this year. She has been out of school. She's 15 years old. And she will be 16th, October 4th. I, I don't know. There are mothers here. But I'm telling you, when you have a child that is sick, that can't talk to you, can't call you mommy for months, then you understand what I'm saying. Um, this is a child that you're looking at. I wouldn't have brought her to a church because it's like she has a mental problem. We have seen psychiatric doctors. She has been on drugs. We have been praying. I have met so many wonderful men of God that have assisted me to hold on. This is my only daughter. I have two children. And something happened now. And I said, I am not going to my house with this miracle. I'm going to say it right now, right here on this ground. So that people that are doubting, let them hear, let them see, let them know there's a God that we serve and is a living God. This child is supposed to be the SS3 preparing for exams, but I, I doubt much. I was like, maybe we should go back to SS1. She has not held a biro since April. She was given a form as daddy was praying. I was not paying attention, actually. I was praying. I just turned my eyes. And I saw her stretch her hand. She collected the, the, a form that was given. And she stretched her hand and collected a biro. And I turned and I said, can I help? She looked at me. And she started filling the form herself. Uh, uh. <laughs> There's a God. She filled the form herself, wrote her name. Nicolette Asoluka wrote her age, 15, and she says she's a female. I have not seen that since April. It has not happened. She has not even written, my name is, or mine, or whatever, none. It has not happened, but it happened here. And I'm not going to my house with this testimony. I am standing right here, right now. And I need to say, Thank you for special mashallah woyemi for encouraging me to come here. And he said, I know you are a very busy woman, but I know you are going through a lot. But I thank Jesus. I thank God. And daddy, God will continue to bless you. For every woman that is here with her child, we will not bury our children. Our children will bury us. Because I know the sleepless nights 
three days, one, one week, no sleep. She can't sleep, I can't sleep. The devil came, he tempted, but he has failed. And I thank you for everybody. I thank for the prayers. I thank for this wonderful family. And may God continue. The oil will never run dry. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. It's sanity gone. Amen. And the evidence was there. Amen. For some months, what she couldn't do before, she did it and did it perfectly. That's divine solution. Divine. Everybody shout divine solution. Shout it louder. Divine solution. That's for us all in Jesus' name. It's permanent for her. She's totally free. And let's listen to the next testifier. Praise the Lord. My name is Christiana John. And by the grace of God, I'm born again. I come from Newtown District, Badagri, Lagos. I was here four days ago for a program. And I decided to attend this crusade before I go. I'm having arthritis for three years now. Pains in my leg and in my hand. Before I sleep in the night, I must take diclofenac so that it will relieve the pain in the morning for me to be able to carry on my duty. But by the grace of God, as I came here yesterday, the GS said we should lay one hand on our head wherever we are having problem and the other one up. I lay my hand on my head and say, arthritis must go. So by the grace of God, when I went home, I did not take any medication. In the, up, in the morning, I woke up, no pain up to now again. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Arthritis must go and arthritis has... And it's gone forever. Amen. Whatever the affliction in your body must go. And when is it going? To now. Now, let's go to the social media and media crew. We'll come back to the testimonies there. We have them lined up. Let's get ready. Yes, social media. Don't go yet. Still stay around. Miracle time. Testimony time. Miracle time. Back to life after the prayer of the man of God. We have this testimony coming all the way from Isolo, Lagos State. Pastor Shagun Ajayi, he was healed of the deadly COVID-19 virus after the GS prayer for him in the isolation center. He got up and he is healed. Praise the Lord. We also have this coming from YouTube. This is the power of God coming in form of divine solution against HIV and AIDS. We have this coming from Born Greats Nwogu from YouTube. He says, HIV AIDS positive has turned to negative after the prayer of the man of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we have several more still coming in. And this one is coming also from YouTube. This person says, I have just been healed of pains in my head, in my eyes, and some part of my face. After the final amen. Praise the Lord. Something about our final amen. And this is coming all the way from Kano State. It says that Brother Daniel from Gadi Group in Kano is testifying of how God touched him during the ministration. He's been having this foul breath, which has been difficult for him to move around people. And it has lasted for 15 years. But after the prayer of the man of God, divine solution came the foul breath disappear. And now we'll take live testimonies. We go straight to Edo State, South South Nigeria. Edo State live. 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 Uh, 
Advanced region and Edo states. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. I want to testify what God has done in my life through our Father in the Lord, W.F. Kumui, when he visited the Calabar uh, state. So I want to testify what he did for me. He healed me from my ulcer. He healed me from ulcer. When he finished uh, ministry, he said that we should lay in our hand. After the ministry said that we should lay in our hand in the way that is paining us. And really, I've been visiting uh, uh, hospitals concerning this thing almost four years now. I've been visiting hospitals, I've been drinking tablets. Even ministers have been coming praying. I've been coming to, uh, for them to pray for me. But during that time, during that program in Calabar, I was at my chat at the back there. When he said we should lay our hand where he's praying us, I lay my hand on my tummy. I want to tell you that immediately he prayed and went home. When I went home now, I believe that that also has gone. When I reached home, I started, I tried to eat what I cannot be eating. Because when I went to the hospital, they said that I should not eat this, don't eat it, don't eat beans, don't eat pepper, don't eat this one, which I love this very much. So I love it so much. Said we should not eat, I should not eat it. But immediately I reached home now, I started eating all those things. That business, I started eating it. Today, I have not seen that person again. Praise the Lord! I will not be seeing that person again. Look at me now. Look at me now. Look at me shining. Look at me falling. And next, we go to River State Live. River State Live. While we wait for While River State, while we wait for River State to come up, we will now give you some other testimonies from the social media. And here we have leukemia from the second month of diagnosis by, from Joyce Osinaike on YouTube. She sent this, that leukemia disappeared after the prayers of the man of God. Praise the Lord. And just for you to know the big names are beginning to bow to divine solution. And this is coming from Nene Great. And she says, I have been healed from rhinosinustis and laryngophragnil, whatever that meant. This disorder is related with throats and um, pains in the chest and everything. But after the prayer of the man of God, tonight, divine solution, that name bowed to divine solution. Amen. Another from Canada, um, Edmonton particularly. This is from Shola Olawale. Three years allergy to milk disappeared and she tested herself and now she drinks milk and there are no challenges anymore. Praise the Lord. And we, go, we will go back to Lagos now as this is coming from Oluwa Kemi Olushegun who has had a stiff and painful neck. Yeah, she has been nursing this for so many days. But after the prayer of the man of God and instruction to lay hands on where there were problems, it says it fe she felt a relief on, his, on, on her neck and thus she got her healing perfected in Jesus' name. We'll now return to the state overseer as we will come back with more live testimonies. There's a great testimony from Enugu, will to be coming live when we return. Back to the overseer now. Praise the Lord. The Lord is working wonder in various parts of the world. You've heard the one from Canada, you heard from Edo State, and all the ones from Kando and other places. The Lord has done it for them, He will do yours. Any miracle you are still expecting, just believe it is done and you will receive the manifestation. Let's have the next testifier here. Tell us your name and the place you come from, what God has done for you. Very briefly. Praise the Lord. 
I've, I've run across about the Eastern Bookie. Yeah. Name? My name is Benjamin Aniche. Benjamin Aniche. I have this through since two, 2015. It has not been going well. But when the man of God I, I pray, yes, yes. I, I, I start moving. Yes. Since that time, I, I was I was I, I, I was moving. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah. Praise the living God! Hallelujah. This is my husband standing. I want to testify to the goodness of God. How God has touched him this very night as we came here for this divine uh, solution. So it happens that since 2015, he has been down for this stroke. So we have been battling here and there. This one goes, say, this medicine, this one. We went to uh, Use General Hospital. We spent about two good weeks. So the doctor that is in charge of this stroke, he says, he has tried his best that uh, he didn't know anything that he would do again, that we should go home, that he has been discharged. So since then, we have been battling, buying drugs here and there for so therapy, no avail. So this very uh, divine solution. So I was telling him that as we are coming, you are not going to go back the same as you come in Jesus' name. So that is what God has done for him tonight. He has not been walking with that, uh, hold, handling this walking stick. But look at the walking stick now. He can walk right down from there, down to this auditorium. So I really give God the glory for the healing, and I believe that the healing will be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He has done it The before. miracle will be permanent. Amen. The miracle is permanent. In the name of Jesus, stroke, gone. The doctors did what they knew how to do, but didn't solve the problem. Go back home, they went back home. Now, they are here, the mighty power of God has done it. And it's working. He will work in your life, and you will see the manifestation in Jesus' name. Next testifier. Praise the Lord. My name is Ahajara Tijidion. I'm from Coking Church. That's Church of Christ in Nation. I was invited by one of my members. I, didn't, I cannot remember her name. But she called. She invited me for this program. I came this evening when man of God said that we should place, uh, place our hands where he's paying us because I have a uh, waste pen for six years now. That was 2015. But I see I cannot even bend. I cannot bend down like this. But now I can do it. So I want to appreciate the goodness of God to me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. How many years did she say? Six years. When the simple prayer touches, touches you, you see six years, it doesn't matter. Six times, two times, three times, four, whatever the number of years. What will happen to the pain? What will happen to the bondage? Gone. It has received her own. You receive yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Hey. Next Praise testify. The Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Patience Sunday. I came from Yaya region, prevailing district. Prevailing district. I, I have a pain in teeth one year. I, I cannot feel eat food with my teeth. My husband said, my ma go hospital, they remove the teeth. I said, no, God is there. This divine solution that is coming, God must heal me. But by the grace of God today, I received my healing. That's why I came here to thank God in the name of Jesus. You say yes, how many years? Lord. Hallelujah. How many years did you say? One year. One year pain. You know, if you have just one day pain, you know what it means. But this one, 365 days. Gone. Gone. Praise the Lord. Our God is the God of miracle. God of miracle. Social media now. Let's move over to the uh, media section. On the social media. Great testimonies happening on the social media. And that is why we'll be taking these all the way from Europe. And um, Omaiba Joseph said, 
said, after the prayer of the man of God yesterday, this morning, Saturday, the Euro European driving license, which I prayed about last night, after the prayer of the man of God, I got it this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we also have this from Mr. Callistos from Lagos State. He has been suffering from diabetes for over seven years now. And yesterday, as the man of God prayed and mentioned his problem, the sickness vanished. Praise the Lord. And we also have this coming from, from uh, Joyce Oshinaike from YouTube. This person has been suffering from leukemia. But after the prayer of the man of God yesterday, leukemia vanished. And this is coming from YouTube as well, from Pauline Dennis. It says, I am healed of Aetios Ania. This has been my trouble for a very long time. But after the prayer of the man of God tonight, I got my healing. Praise the Lord. And just before we take you to a spectacular testimony in Enugu, we'll begin at River State, where we have a live testimony. South South Nigeria, River State, live. While we wait for River State to get set, there is another striking one. And do you know that COVID-19 is still bowing to the power of divine solution? And this is coming from Abimbola Adekoya from Magodo District in Lagos. She says, she said, I was coronavirus positive. And the Lord healed me. I went back to the hospital and I tested negative. Praise the Lord. And the Lord is still doing more, still dealing with COVID-19. Because this is also coming all the way um, from the social media. As this person says that he's been having different symptoms. And has been thinking, oh, this could be COVID-19. He went for a test. It was confirmed positive. But during the ministration of our Father in the Lord, he said that we should manifest our faith for a divine solution. And I tell you, I manifested my faith, and I can confirm to you right now that I am COVID-19 negative. All the symptoms have disappeared. Praise the Lord. And we still have several more still coming in from the social media. This one says from Paul Williams from YouTube, yesterday, after the GS prayer, I was totally healed of pain at the back of my head. It's been troubling me for a long time, but after the prayers, I got my healing. If I am precious, from Enugu wrote on Facebook, since last Saturday, I've been having serious headache after a medical test. I was diagnosed of malaria and typhoid. But yesterday, during the message, as the GS was ministering, I was healed. No more symptoms of malaria and typhoid as I'm, as I'm writing now. Praise the Lord. And now we'll take you to Enugu Live. We have um, Dr. Promise Asogwa from Enugu, who sent us this testimony. It is indeed a striking testimony. A woman was taken to that hospital, as you would see on your screens now. A woman was taken to that hospital, and she was completely unconscious. Completely unconscious. Dr. Promise, can you speak? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, uh, this is Dr. Promise Asoba, uh, uh, an internal medicine specialist in 
WNTH and the institutional office of Barclay in Enugu. Uh, the woman on your screen is a 60-year-old woman who came to the hospital on Thursday, and uh, within that day, he, she became completely unconscious. In fact, uh, by the medical scale, we we'll call it a glass coma scale, we'll to measure the level of unconsciousness. It was between 4 over 15 to 5 over 15, meaning she was comatose. And in that process, the blood pressure was so high, and she couldn't breathe. The oxygen saturation was low. We had to start her on oxygen. And because she was comatose, we had to pass a feeding tube, we call it nasogastric tube, tube that connected the nose, the mouth, the oesophagus, and then the, the stomach. And she was having uh, unstoppable uh, convulsions. We call them seizures. So she was being managed for what is suspected to be hemorrhagic stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke is a bleeding type of stroke that kills easily. It's so devastating. But during that first night of a uh, uh, device solution global crusade, why discussed with the, the, the son and the daughter, and they hooked up with the divine global solution crusade online. And after the GSM preaching and prayer, uh, a few hours after that, the nurse on duty notified me that the oxygen level had normalized, I mean, her oxygen saturation, and uh, she now opened her eyes. I thought it was a joke, and when I came down to our general morning devotion, I discovered that the oxygen saturation has normalized, so we have to stop the oxygen. The woman was fully conscious, and then the, the recurrent seizures had stopped, and then we discovered that she could, talk, she could tolerate uh, a fluid, so we gave her water and she took. Few hours after that, I still went back, I discovered that she could eat. Then she was propped up, and then I removed the feeding tube, we call it an asphyxic tube, and we fed her with rice in the afternoon, and then she ate very well. Solution, live. Miracle, somebody recovered from bleeding stroke. They have an unconscious comatose for two days. It was so dramatic. As you can see on the screen, I've never seen this in my years of practice. This is truly the finger of God. We now return to the state overseer. We see the finger of God. Bringing what? Divine solution. Divine solution. Divine solution. Amen. One more. Let's have one more here, quickly. Come up quickly. Tell us your name, where you come from, what the Lord has done for you. Praise the Lord. My name is Hans Niwoha from Potakos. I came from Potakos yesterday to Abuja. Um, since last year, seven things have been bothering me, seven areas of my life. Therapy. Then on Monday Bible study, the last Monday Bible study that just passed, as I was entering the church, the man of God said, there are seven areas of your life that, that is bothering you, and these seven areas of your life is connected to the seven prophetic names of God. I knew it was me. I knew it was me. He said I should, he said I should come to Abuja and meet him face to face. I knew it was me. I wrote the seven things in, in this book, and I carried this book to Monday Bible study. I knew it was me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The seven things wondering that have been bothering, disturbing, plaguing our brother, the Lord removed them. He is healed, delivered, saved, set free. Let's worship the Lord together. Let's worship the Lord together. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Join in singing. Miracle working God. Alpha and Omega. Let's praise the name of the Lord together. Sing, sing and worship the Lord. It's a miracle working God. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's a miracle walking God. He's a miracle walking God. 
Sing and praise the name of the Lord. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the miracle working. Amen. Tomorrow, make sure you are here on time. Before 5 o'clock, we want to begin to pray together. Uh, tomorrow morning, sorry, 7.30, we are here before that second session, 5 in the evening. So invite others, tell them to come and partake of the blessing of God. Let's all lift up our voices and worship the name of the Lord. Bless him for the miracle that he has wrought. Glorify him. Praise his name. Magnify the Lord for what he's done for us. Give him glory, give him praise. And let's pray for tomorrow's service. We have double blessing, double dose, double blessing. In the morning, 7.30. In the evening, 5 o'clock. 5 p.m. in the evening, we have the second session. In the morning, 7.30. Let's pray. The Lord will visit us. The Lord will renew his servant. More anointing, more and power. Greater than before. We flow through him and unto us. And all the participants will receive more and more blessings. We receive divine.